All right, well, welcome everyone to Home Office Hours Live with Vistaprint. Thank you so much for joining us today. If this is your first time joining us, Home Office Hours is a series of live discussions that we've put together on timely topics, and we'll be featuring guest speakers as well as our very own Vistaprint team members. We know that small businesses have changed and we wanted to help. So we created this series as a way to connect when we're all spending a lot of time working from home and we're dealing with various challenges. And we've tapped our colleagues to help answer some of the questions that you're all having as business owners. So today we have two of our Vistaprint team members here with us. Stephanie Sorts Sortsis, a Senior Marketing Specialist uh, for North America Marketing, and Ingrid Simon, a Senior Analyst, Customer and Competitive Insights. So welcome to both of you. Um, can you give a hello to our audience? Hi. Hey, Stephanie. Hey, guys. Hey, Ingrid, thank you for joining us. And we also have with us guest panelist Elise Bailey, who is a new business and growth editor from Square. Elise, can you say hello? Hello, everybody. Hey, Elise, thanks for joining us. So today we're talking about preparing to open or reopen as uh, different industries and in different areas across the U.S. go back to business in varying phases. So before we get into that, um, we have a few housekeeping items. We'll take questions at the end of the session, but you can definitely feel free to submit those all throughout the session. If you're on Zoom, you can submit your question using the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen. We know a lot of you are also joining us via the Facebook Live, so if you have a question, just add it as a comment there in Facebook, and we'll get that in the Q&A in Zoom as well. And also, we'll be sending the recording out after we wrap up to anybody who did register for the session via Zoom. Uh, if you are joining us on Facebook Live who didn't register via Zoom, you can check out our YouTube channel afterwards. The recording will be up there as well. All right, so let's get started and jump into it. So at Vistaprint, we've obviously been thinking a whole lot about how to help prepare our customers for reopening back up, whatever that might look like for small businesses in different areas. So Ingrid, can you help get us started? What should small business owners be thinking about before anything else? Um, let's lay a foundation here. Yeah, for sure. So your number one priority should be making your customers and employees feel safe and implementing safety measures to make sure you're able to actually deliver on that promise. Um, we also want to recognize that getting back to business and going back to normal, unfortunately, are not the same thing. In order to get back to business, we need to be creating a new normal and should be taking our customers and employees into consideration more than ever. Yeah, I also think that at this time, communication is more important than ever. So it's definitely worth a little bit of extra time and effort to thank your employees and show appreciation for them during these times. Yeah, absolutely agree. I know, um, Stephanie, communication has been a key theme throughout many of the topics that we've discussed on this webinar. So Ingrid, can you go a little bit deeper and talk about um, some steps that you can take uh, to make your employees feel safe now? Yeah, um, so there's actually a lot we can be doing to keep our employees staying comfortable and safe. Uh, first, it's important to be flexible and understanding during this time. You'll want to find ways to meet your employees and customers where they feel most comfortable. So for some, that might be adjusting responsibilities so they're able to work remotely or continuing to serve customers through your online channels. Um, these new processes and offerings you've created during quarantine should not be looked at as short-term solutions, but really an alternative path or additional offering moving forward. Um, you should also still aim to limit physical interaction whenever possible. Yeah, that's a great point, Ingrid. Thank you. I think um, businesses are, we're really past the short-term solutions phase and we should really be thinking about deeper changes that can last now at this point. And I think you have some suggestions about not just shifting your communication and your flexibility, which is so important, but also some really practical operational needs um, to adjust your physical space. Sure, yeah, I think at this point, we've all seen how essential businesses like grocery stores, doctor's offices have been incorporating social distancing during this time. So things like floor markings, those things can be easily adopted into your business to encourage social distancing. Um, additionally, consider reorganizing your space so that it forces people to remain six feet, six feet apart. Um, you can also do this by reconfiguring your furniture or removing waiting areas. All of these tactics will help encourage social distancing. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think those visuals and, and the physical layout can really go a long way towards encouraging that. I think that's really practical advice. Thank you. So beyond reorganizing the space that you do have, Stephanie, how can you make updates to the ways in which you offer your services and your products? It's definitely important to offer contactless solutions when available. So if you allow your customers to place orders online, pay for those orders online or over the phone, and um, try to come up with some creative ways that they can pick up orders without coming into too much contact with people. So set up a table for order pickup in your lobby, or if your space allows for it, maybe um, do a drive up pickup type thing where they call you and you just go bring the order to their car. Yeah, I think these are some really important ways to adapt and ways that you can create some longer term solutions. So Elise, you work at Square. Um, part of your role is all about writing articles that share advice on solutions exactly like those that, that Stephanie was just talking about. Can you elaborate a little bit further for us on how small businesses can actually go about enabling that online ordering and pickup? Yeah, so I think when we think online ordering and pickup, we automatically assume we're talking about restaurants and food. And while that is one big piece of the puzzle, there's also a lot of different steps that retail stores can be taking to enable the same thing. Um, so with, I guess we'll start with retail stores specifically, um, you can enable, especially if you're using a solution like Square Online Ordering and Pickup for your retail store. So if you have people that are buying things online, they can pick up in store or you can enable curbside pickup. Um, you can also do local delivery. So if you have someone on your staff or maybe yourself that's willing um, to deliver orders, you can go ahead and deliver orders to um, people nearby. And then um, one kind of creative solution that we've seen with people um, as things have started reopening is retail stores are starting to use appointments to allow a certain amount of people in their store at specific time. So it gives them a little extra time to bop in, clean, make sure people have enough space to maintain that social distance. They can really get around and look through items if that's what they want to do. Um, but it ensures that people still have the retail experience while still maintaining um, a lot of the local ordinances that we've seen have been put into place. Um, and then for the restaurant side of things, um, you can enable curbside pickup or picking up at maybe a table. I've seen a lot of restaurants just doing a table like at their front door. Um, one thing that's really important to remember there is like adding a sneeze guard. So like a big piece of plexiglass that is just like an actual physical barrier between you and your customers. That's something that I'm seeing a lot like at the local coffee shop or when I've gone to pick up takeout. Um, Again, you can also set up local delivery. Square has a uh, functionality on our e-commerce solution where people or on the back end, you can decide if you want to have your team um, doing local delivery. So that just means the ticket will be sent directly to your restaurant and then the customer will get updates on via text message on where their delivery is. Um, and then we also have a number of different integrations that you can use. So if you are interested in like Postmates or Chowley, um, those are all things that automatically integrate with Square's software. So you can be doing delivery through those as well. Those are great ideas, thank you. So how about when you get to the point of actually taking payment? You know, we, we all know that taking credit cards and cash involves contact. So um, any recommendations there? Yeah, so interestingly enough, the WHO has actually recommended that people use less cash. So I've seen a lot of businesses that have actually said they don't want to use cash anymore. They're not accepting it, like the local Walgreens, which was pretty surprising. Um, but you can, um, if you are taking credit cards, take contactless payments. So that means Apple Pay, Android Pay. Um, if you are, for instance, using the square point of sale, if you have the little like reader, um, those are all automatically will take contactless payments. Another thing a lot of people don't realize about their credit card is they can also take, you can also take tap payments with them. So on credit cards, you can just tell customers to peek at their credit card. They have a little um, a signal that kind of looks like a Wi-Fi signal, but that basically means all they have to do is tap their card to the reader and that'll be like a contactless payment just as secure um, as using like the chip. Um, another thing that you can do um, like with the square point of sale is disable the signature screen and also skip the receipts screen. So signatures used to be added for payment systems like this. 
um, as like another layer of security, but with the addition of EMV chips, um, it's not necessary anymore. And in the US and Canada, card providers don't require signatures for tap, dip, or swipe payments anymore. Um, so you can just disable the signature setting right within the Square app. Um, another thing you can do if you are a retail store or you have services, you can charge people with invoices. So that's completely contactless. Um, you just send the invoice and then your customer can go ahead and fill out the information and pay however they like to on their end. Um, you can also set up recurring payments. Um, and then finally, if you don't have access to your payments hardware, or maybe you aren't actually taking in-person payments at all, maybe you're a totally remote business at this point, um, you can use a virtual terminal. So Square has a virtual terminal that basically turns your credit card, or excuse me, turns your computer into a credit card terminal. So you can manually enter and process payments directly from your web browser on your laptop or your computer. Well, those are some great solutions. Thank you. So let's, Let's switch gears here a little bit. Let's talk about cleaning, um, because no matter how many changes that you make to the space itself and to reduce contact, your space, if you have a physical space, it's still going to need to be cleaned and sanitized in a really thorough and consistent manner. So Ingrid, can you talk a little bit about how cleaning and sanitation is going to play a new role here, uh, one that is obviously a much more prominent role as businesses start to reopen? Definitely true. Um, regardless of what type of business you have, you're going to want to incorporate time blocks in your day to sanitize your space, equipment, products, etc. So for example, if you have a retail store, you might want to build in 30 minute blocks throughout your day where you can close down, clean your space. Um, if you have a hair salon, maybe it's scheduling your appointments farther apart so you have time to clean your space in between. And this way you don't have customers hanging out in the reception area. Um, even if you have an e-commerce business, uh, carving out time to sanitize your space is still smart to ensure that you're keeping up with safety standards. Also creating a worksheet or checklist to keep track of how often all your equipment is being cleaned is a great way to stay on top of sanitation measures. Um, I recommend ramping up slowly to really understand how much time you'll need and what you're actually capable of maintaining. So. For example, take a look at what you have in your space. Are there any items that might be problematic to clean? Um, or you can find an alternate that might be easier. So for example, maybe you want to switch some things out with a disposable option, for example, like menus. Um, so all of those things and also thinking through like, are there things that I can actually remove from my space? So this way, you know, it's one less thing that you have to worry about or you have to clean. Yeah, thank you for those tips. I think something that really stood out with those tips is they are going to take time. So, you know, we know that managing time is always important in managing a business, but it's definitely going to take on a whole new level of importance now. So Stephanie, can you talk to us about how expectations might vary depending on the locale? Sure, yeah, yeah. so um, we've seen here in the United States that different states have different regulations and rules, so I think it's important to highlight any rules that are specific to your community, your state, even that in your town, um, and outline how you're complying with them. So for example, if you live in a town where you're required to wear a mask to enter any kind of establishment, you should post that for your customers to see outside of your door um, and avoid the, your, the possible confusion or confrontation that your employees might face. Yeah, absolutely. I think with all the different rules um, within many different locales, there could definitely be confusion. So it's good to, to really communicate that up front. And we know it might be difficult, probably will be difficult for employees to learn all of these new changes. Ingrid, do you have any suggestions on how to help employees adjust? Yeah, absolutely. So one thing that you should be doing is developing and circulating documentation, explaining what these new procedures are, and also dedicating time to train employees on safety measures before actually opening. You might also want to consider schedule, scheduling regular check-ins with employees to make sure that they're feeling comfortable. Um, this time could also be used to solicit feedback on any new processes and safety measures to making so that you're making sure that they're actually working as intended and there aren't any gaps. Um, in general, you want to be explicit and transparent on what steps you're taking to keep your space and your employees safe. Information should be easy to find and included in multiple touch points. So this goes for both employees and customers. 
And I think beyond their safety, you also want your employees to know that you appreciate that they're coming out and working during this global pandemic. So it's important to include that in any signage or communications as well. Yeah, absolutely. Those are great points, both of you. I think, you know, even before the pandemic, being clear, communicating, being encouraging, and really having a focus on training were all important things to do. But absolutely, they are so much important now more than ever. So um, thank you to all of you. I think given the nature of this topic, I'm sure that we've got some questions coming in from the audience. So I do want to make sure that we have um, some time there for this. So let's go over to the Q&A. Um, again, just a reminder, if you're on Zoom, you can use the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen to submit your question. If you're joining us on Facebook Live, just enter your question in the comments and we'll get that in the Zoom Q&A as well. So I see that we have a few coming up already. Okay, so are there any equipment or tools that my staff could use to reduce the transmission of infection for essential contact? Um, Stephanie, can you get us started there on that one? Sure, sure. so uh, I think, I'm sorry, I think there was an issue with my audio, so let me know if there's any yeah, You sound a little echoey. <laughs> oh, really? Sorry about that. Oh, does it help if I lean closer? <laughs> um, no, not really. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll just I'll carry on then. Um, so, so we do we have face masks and face shields that can help reduce transmission. And I know that Elise mentioned earlier on the call that um, having a kind of a plastic screen or something at your point of register or anything like that could be helpful. I also think that the, um, the floor decals reminding people to stay six feet away could be helpful as well. Um, thank you. Elise, um, anything that you would expand upon there from a, a square perspective? Um, I think the sneeze guard is really big. And then I've seen a number of different solutions when it comes to um, people when they are at the point of sale, what they do there. Um, for instance, if you decide to enable the tip thing, you'll still have to have people touch for that. Um, I've seen people use like one use, I guess like wax paper you use for like a pastry and the people use that as a barrier and then the staff cleans it off right after that. Um, I think the That's biggest thing I do is if people are touching the point of sale at all, they just make sure that they can like visibly see your staff cleaning it off and sanitizing things in between. Um, I feel like that's, that's like the biggest thing besides the sneeze guard. Great. Thank you both. Those are great ideas. And I think the wax paper um, in particular is a pretty ingenious hack there. All right. So our next question here, um, Ingrid, maybe you can share some examples of what we see our customers doing. And then Elise, I'll turn it over to you for some examples from Square. So the question is, how can you pivot your offerings to be relevant to your customers' needs right now? Ingrid, can we start with you? Yeah. So the big biggest pivot we're seeing by no surprise is obviously switching from offline to online. Um, but in addition to con continuing to offer services and products online, you should also consider maybe um, pivoting your target customer as well. So while your current customers might not have the means or the needs for your product right now, there might be other customers out there that could benefit from the same product or offering. Um, you should also be staying in tune with your customers' needs your customers' needs. Uh, there's a lot of information out there right now on how consumer behaviors and needs have adapted over this time. So for example, we know people are a lot more focused on health and wellness these days. So you can use this information to see how you can adapt accordingly. Um, for example, if you have a clothing boutique, now you might want to be offering cloth masks or gloves. Uh, if you're a bakery, maybe you want to consider offering more health-focused products in addition to all of your sweet snacks. Um, so things like that and thinking about how you can reposition the products that you have. Awesome suggestions. Thank you. Elise, anything to add there? Yeah, I mean, I think we've seen a lot of really incredible pivots and changes and updates that different types of businesses have done over the past couple of months. Um, some of the biggest ones that we've seen, I mean, beyond like takeout are like the obvious meal kits or like bakery kits. I know there's a bakery down the street from me called Mr. Holmes Bakehouse here in San Francisco, and they've been selling um, basically set up so people can make like their own focaccia or pasta or cookies or scones. So even if they aren't able to automatically pick up 
um, their goodies in person. They are shipping boxes like all over the US right now, which is pretty incredible because that's a market that they really haven't been able to tap into um, beyond where they were before. Um, we've also seen a lot of restaurants that have pivoted or added on um, like general store offerings. So a lot of restaurants have the ability to tap into um, different supply chains that consumers might not be able to. So at the very beginning of shutdowns, when people were able to, everyone was running out of yeast and everyone was baking, wasn't that, wasn't even that long ago, but um, we saw a lot of restaurants that were offering things like toilet paper and yeast and like maybe bottles of wine or um, some of their favorite like baked goods or full loaves of bread just because they have the ability to source these things more easily than consumers. And if you're already ordering takeout, it's kind of nice to be able to get fresh veggies and like an extra couple bottles of wine. Um, from that way, it's a nice way to add into your product mix. Um, salons, we've seen people doing salon visits via video. So I know like my mom was talking to her hair salon person and my dad actually colored her hair like the woman shipped her everything she needed and then they walked through things via facetime so it's kind of cool to be able to do things in person or excuse me can't do things in person you can do them over video um i know a lot of fitness studios or like children's classes have shifted to doing zoom offerings um and then across all types of verticals one thing that we've seen a lot is collaborations which is super cool and sometimes that's like two different restaurants getting together and doing like a really special meal or sometimes that's like a retail store and a spa putting together like a home like spa situation. So I think really the biggest thing we can say is be flexible and be creative um, and work with the people around you because I think the more you collaborate and what we've seen from restaurants is the more that you collaborate together, um, the better off everyone can be. And the more people really enjoy the fact that you're giving them diverse, unique offerings that you haven't had before. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, those are some great examples. Thank you. Your mother must really trust your father to let him color her hair. Uh, yeah. It turned out really well, though. So, <laughs> Well, that's great. <laughs> All right. So our next question here um, is coming in from Facebook Live. Um, what is another way of getting your products and service noticed on your website? Elise, um, anything that you might have to add there? Yeah, so there's a number of different things that you can do. Um, I think a lot of that has to do with your marketing. So that can be anything from sending out emails around your products to your existing customer base to trying to find new customers. Um, you can do that by maybe start by testing out like some Facebook ads or some Instagram ads that drive back to your store, just to try and get a better idea of what, what people are looking for. Um, again, you should know who your target market is, who you're looking for, um, and then try and meet them where they already are, especially if they're online, um, or what they might be looking for in general. Um, another thing you can do is some pretty like basic SEO tips. Um, so working on ensuring that your pages are starting to show up for the specific local offerings that you have. Um, I know, I think that there's like a resource um, set up that you guys have at Vistaprint. I think we're going to have some, some Square information. Yeah, 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 so you can check that out. And then Square also has like a resource center that has a ton of information around marketing and things you can do for SEO and getting started with Instagram and Facebook and just driving a lot more awareness to your overall products online. Um, and that is squareup.com forward slash town squares where you can find a lot of that information. Great, thank you. And we'll also include those resources actually in our follow-up email as well. Um, Stephanie, do you have anything to add to that? Um, ways of getting your products and service noticed on your website? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think Elise hit on some good points. I think it's also important to make sure that you're displaying them in the best way possible. So make sure you, maybe during this time at home, you update some of your product photography or your descriptions. Um, just kind of hone those things and use the time you have while you're home to make sure that they're being presented in the best way possible. Great. I'll also do one square plug on the photography thing because it is so important. 
Um, we have a photo studio. It's based in New York, but it's basically a robot with a camera on it. And it takes all the different, it takes like four or five different angle photos of your item. So basically what you do is you put whatever you want photos of in a box, you ship it off to the photo center, and then they'll send back everything um, with a bunch of photos you can use on your website. So there's more information about that on the Square website as well. But that's kind of a nice way that you can, if you're not a professional photographer, there are ways to do it that are amazing too at home if you're really photography focused. But if you're not, you can use our photo robot. That's a very cool option. Thank you for sharing that. All right, so our next question here is also coming in from Facebook Live. Uh, I have my own business and run a religious organization for. What do you suggest for businesses starting up? Um, definitely knowing that this is a, a tough time here. Um, any insights there? Um, Elise, do you have customers at Square who are you know, just getting started up in this tough time? Yeah, um, that's, a, that's a big question, but there are a lot of people that are home and they're like, this is the time that I wanna get started. Um, so there are a lot of different things that you can do. One of the number one things you can do is create a business plan, understand what you are going to be doing with your business, where you want it to be, where you want it to go, what your core values are for your organization, um, and then allow that to create um, more steps down the line. So that means looking into like your target market, who you're looking for. Um, and once you kind of have that foundation down, shifting into your actual product or your service or your offering, so really fine tuning that, maybe working with friends and family to understand what they're looking for or whatever they think is going to be like the best option for you um, and your business. So getting some, some help there, um, testing everything out, seeing what you think. Um, and then when you think you're ready to go, making sure that you also have a really good setup when it comes to marketing, so getting the word out about your product or service in your organization. Um, I believe we have a business, we do, we have a guide that's just how to start a business. So there are like 500 different things that I'm not mentioning here um, that we can include online. They're also helpful. So if you're gonna have a brick and mortar location, how to do that, um, how to set up things like your tax and your business banking, um, and if you are going to start having employees at some point, how you can really build a foundation from there. Good advice for a, definitely a tough time. Thank you. So I know we just have one more minute here. So I'll take one more question and then we're going to close it out for today. Um, so this question, um, I'm a retail store. What industry specific considerations are there? Um, Ingrid, can you tell us anything that we know from our, our research here at Vistaprint? Of course, a lot of our customers are retailers. So sorry, Ingrid, it seems like your sound has um, gone oh. out. Yes, sorry. Oh, there we go. We got okay. <laughs> um, what I was saying is I think there's a lot of resources online um, that are providing a lot of really great tips on what you can be doing. Um, I think also from a safety perspective, one, just being, um, having a lot of signage and information available on what safety measures you're taking, as well as providing um, PPE equipment to either your employees or having it available in a store so that if a customer wants to walk in but not, might not necessarily have brought their mask, um, they can still kind of go in shop. And so I think having those on hand are really great. Um, but again, there's I know we're running out of time. So I would say definitely use the resources that we'll uh, link later on. Awesome, thank you. Um, Elise, did you have anything to add there quickly? Um, and then we'll, we'll go wrap up. Um, I just to echo what Ingrid said, there's a ton of great stuff that's online that can, that can help, but just make sure that you are setting up your, your store for social distancing. Um, you're clearly marking everything, you're creating barriers between your staff, and then you're also making sure that the people that are working for you on the front lines every day feel appreciated um, and loved, and you're communicating all the measures that you are doing, not only to your, your staff and your employees, but also to your customers. So maybe sending them an email or putting some things on your social media ch channels to let them know the steps that you're taking and how you're really working to make sure that everyone is safe when, when they're in your space. 
Thank you both. So we are at time, so we're going to wrap up for the day, but we are going to be hosting these discussions every Tuesday on various topics. Next week, we're actually talking about communicating your reopening to your customers. We definitely want uh, the audience's input on these topics. So there is a short survey at the end of this. Uh, please take a couple of minutes to fill it out. Let us know how we can make these more valuable for you and what you want to hear us talk about. Um, you can also send questions to homeofficehours at vistaprint.com. So thank you all so much for your time. Um, again, we'll send out some resources after the fact. We'll include a few links there. Um, we have a support small business hub here at Vistaprint. Uh, we have articles specifically on going back to business. We'll also include Squares Hub as well as some other resources that we have. So thank you all so much for your time. Um, thank you to our panelists for joining us. Thank you to the audience for your questions. And this has been Home Office Hours Live. We'll talk with you soon.